40 a.m. and 106.9 FM KGGR. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. And we have Rob Stern here with us. You know how we do it every single Friday. How are you doing, Rob? Doing very well. Very well. It's cold outside, but I can I can deal with that. It's cold and it's kind of dark out there, Rob. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I mean, it, it gets dark at like five o'clock now at night. But uh, yeah. anyway, very, very, uh, very blessed to be here. And I thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope that you had a, a good New Year's and we're off to a big start in 2024. Awesome. Yes. Had a great New Year's, spending time with friends and family and all of that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and give open up the phone lines, 972-988-1040, 972-988-1040. If you want to go ahead and chime in with the conversation, we are talking uh, a mortgage. We're talking, listen, all kinds of stuff right here. You want to call in and talk to the maestro? He's right here. All right, Rob Stern. <laughs> well, listen, right. what did you say? We're looking for big things this year. I mean, what, what's happening with the uh, interest rates? Or I mean, what's big about it? Well, a lot. So, 2024 obviously is uh, uh, is uh, is off to a, off to a big start. We saw 2023 end, and that might be the best place to the best place to go. But we saw 2023 end with a halt to rate increases. Now, if we can kind of we can kind of follow the progression of all these increases, and uh, the Federal Reserve indicated back in uh, September, October, that they expected to. Uh, continue to raise increase uh, continue to raise uh, interest rates rather and then and then that didn't happen they had a meeting they had a meeting in October they didn't raise rates they had a meeting in November and they didn't raise rates uh, they indicated that it may be possible uh, to start reducing rates in 2024 and now they are forecasting at least three rate decreases in 2020 uh, in 2024 um, that's a, that's a really big deal and the reality is, it could be more, and, I, and the reason I say that is because the Federal Reserve, um, the Federal Reserve does not normally telegraph their uh, their actions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, they they send up uh, they send up these trial balloons and sort of what if scenarios to see how the economy reacts. Uh, right now, the stock market is still is still holding its own. Uh, and with that being said, I think there is a lot of likelihood that we're going to continue to see these rates go down even even further in in 2024. Right now, we've seen uh, we've seen the uh, 30 year rate decrease almost three quarters of a percentage point, uh, wow. which is which is huge. Um, you know, I can't stress enough what what that means to uh, to our listeners, to our viewers, to home buyers in general. This is the time to be in the marketplace purchasing yeah. a home uh, because we, we all we all know from from prior from prior experience what happens at a certain point when rates decrease, home prices begin to increase. That's what I was going to ask, because if it goes if it uh, goes down three times this year, what does that do for the prices of the homes? Well, I, I would say without a doubt, uh, probably at the next rate increase or, or the next rate decrease, excuse me, we're going to see home prices jump again. Um, mm -hmm. Prices are already beginning to move to move higher in certain areas. So, you know, it, it's very important that, that the people that we're talking to, the people we're communicating with right now, it's critically important that they they take heed of, of this advice. Now is the right time to be in the marketplace. <laughs> Um, you get approved, let's build the credit file, let's get you ready, develop an action plan to move forward. Um, that doesn't mean you have to buy a house today immediately, but it means at least you'll know what you are, what yeah. you're looking at and what, what your opportunities are. Um, yeah. When rates go down, you can get back in, uh, you, you can jump back in the market and maybe contract for that house uh, immediately if that's what you want to buy. But again, a couple of things to understand. A the, a pre-approval and a and a pre-qualification are two totally different two totally different things. Um, you can get a pre-qualification very simply by calling anybody up on the phone and asking some generic questions and giving them some generic answers. A pre-approval is quite literally a loan that has gone all the way through underwriting, had an underwriter look at the loan, and the underwriter signs off on the loan and says, okay, these people are good to go and this is what they can afford to spend. 
that's what you really want. And that's what we offer with the uh, lenders residential mortgage team with mortgage solutions. I send every loan all the way through underwriting to be to be totally pre-approved. We want somebody to go out looking for a home that knows exactly what they can afford and exactly where their comfort level sits. You take all these things and you put them together in a big ball right now, and it totally points to the fact that this is the right time to be in the marketplace. Do something. Stop throwing your money away on rent. I don't care if your lease uh, <laughs> expires in two months or two years. Now is the right time to be in the marketplace and to know exactly what your, what your uh, capacity is. It's very important. So many people don't even know what they can afford. So yeah. many, pe so many people don't even know what their credit looks like. Uh, maybe they've had problems in the past, and they're just afraid to look. I, I get people that call me all the time and say, "Well, well, I haven't looked at my credit uh, in two years." Yeah, and um, and there's a reason for that. Um, not a good reason, but there's a reason for that. Yeah, you I'm know? scared. I'm scared too, Rob. Well, you shouldn't, but but that's the point. <laughs> You shouldn't be scared to. No, yeah. nobody's going to come and um, and and haul you off to jail because of a bad debt. Yeah. Um, but it's entirely possible. It's entirely probable in many cases to become a homeowner, uh, especially if you're a veteran. We talk about veterans all the time on this show, and uh, and my passion for helping veterans, and and more importantly, the the capacity that I have to. Uh, uh, to help veterans, you know, with a VA mortgage loan, there is no minimum credit score requirement. Uh, I'm seeing people close on homes with 510 credit score, 530 credit scores. Uh, I don't look at credit scores. I look at credit and there's a big difference. Credit, the, the credit, the credit that I'm going to judge you by is going to be the way you've handled your debt over the past 12 months. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. Um, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you have to have a 620 credit score. It means that you have to have, have met your debt commitments, your financial commitments in the past 12 months. And if there's been a problem, we just need to know why that problem, why that problem came about. Uh, so many veterans are buying homes now, and it just really, uh, it really makes me happy to see that they're uh, that they're actually listening to what we say, what we do every yeah. every week. Um, the whole reason, you know, the whole reason we started down this path all those years ago was was to educate and inform. And uh, I think that we are quite literally um, having that impact on people. And that's a that's a good thing. So and I know when it comes to the veterans, you said no minimum credit score. So let's say it's a, a 410. Right. So you're just really looking at the credit to see kind of how you handle it. Make sure you weren't negligent. Is that correct? The, the past 12 months is what's going to judge everything. So yes, okay. ma'am. Um, if somebody's got a 410 credit score, it's entirely likely or probable that they just don't have any activity on their credit whatsoever. Yeah. Um, perhaps old negative, old, old negative credit. Um, yeah. We would build at that point, we would build what is called a non-traditional credit score, meaning we would ask for debts that they have been paying for the past 12 months, uh, verifiable rent, uh, okay. an electric bill where they live, a telephone bill, which might be a, a mobile bill, your cell phone bill for the past 12 months, um, a water bill, perhaps your automobile insurance, perhaps yeah. we would, we would just build the, the credit using non-traditional methods and close that mortgage loan. But again, uh, these are things that people don't know and they don't understand. And if you don't ask, you'll, you'll, you 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 will be leaving a significant benefit on the table. Significant benefit, yeah, because that seems that seems pretty pretty easy, Robin. I'm glad that you mentioned pre qualified versus pre approved, uh, because we get those mixed up all the time. I know that I do. So one way to think of it is, um, we want to approve. <laughs> we want to get approved. So yes, that's yes. a better way to to um kind of keep up with it because I guess anybody can pre qualify you, right? Well, a, a pre pre qualification is not binding. It's just like it's like it's just like these advertisements you see on the internet, and they say, um, "Whatever, we're going to give you uh, five hundred thousand dollars with no income verification." Well, that's not a commitment; that's a advertisement. It's a hook, right? And then when you get into it, all of a sudden, there's all these little nuances and things you have to do and hoops you got to jump through. So that's uh, the reason that in your email you get something that says you are pre-qualified for this vehicle or 
for this credit card. They're just, that's just kind of a light something to kind of reel you in to get that pre-approval. That's all. They, they, all. All these people are trying to do, and, and this brings up another topic, but all, all those all those individuals are doing with that mail solicitation is trying to get their phone to ring. They just want they just want the telephone to ring so that they have a chance to speak to you and they can go ahead and manipulate things to get your credit pulled and put you into some sort of a some sort of a loan. That is not who Mortgage Solutions is. That's not yeah. lender residential. Uh, we are very specific with what we do. We close several billion dollars of mortgage loans every year. Um, a lot of my business is, in fact, with veterans for the very sake and, and the very reason that that um, that we do this type of a mortgage loan. And we're doing nothing special, uh, Autumn. Yeah. All we're doing is following the rules. Again, um, you know, the the rules are set in general by the Veterans Administration, and then they are supplemented or augmented by the various lenders that that take these loan applications um mm -hmm. i don't i don't augment the rules if the va says they will close the loan i'll close them if the va says they'll guarantee the loan i will close the loan yeah. i put no risk-based overlays on my on my mortgage loans and that's a big part of what of what sets us uh, what sets us apart but uh, something else you touched on just a few moments ago i kind of want to go back to and that is these solicitations that we that we that we see that we get in the mail yeah. Um, you know, you need to be very careful when you respond to these solicitations. And, I, and I, we're, we're all guilty of it. But but again, um, people can say anything to you in the form of a letter that is not a commitment to lend money. Um, people people uh, who, who have purchased new homes start getting letters uh, in the mail for um uh, that, that say, uh, send us $85 and we'll file your homestead exemption for you. But your, <laughs> your homestead exemption is free. You don't need to pay somebody to file your homestead exemption. Oh, wow. But but again, new homeowners don't understand that. They don't realize that. Um, you get you get solicitations in the mail f uh, sometimes from people who say, we, we've looked at your credit record and you're, you're approved, you're, you're, you're qualified to be qualified. <laughs> OK, uh, yeah. be very careful how you move forward. And again, I want to give my number out. Call me if you have these questions. I can I can typically steer you in the right direction. My uh, my telephone number is going to be 972-739-2350. That's 972-739-2350. But give me a call. Let me help you through this. Buying a home is a uh, is a huge decision. It's probably the biggest financial commitment you'll ever make in your life. Yeah. But it's also the best commitment you're going to make in your life. Yeah. Becoming a homeowner, becoming a homeowner, puts you into a very unique, uh, a very unique situation that will allow you to to benefit year after year after year for the rest of your life. Wow, I'm excited about it, uh, Rob. So if you want to call in with a question right now, nine seven two nine eight eight ten forty, or you can call Rob when we get off the air. Uh, but 972-988-1040. We're taking testimonies today too. Uh, so give us a call, right, Rob? Yeah, no, and we love we love these testimonials. We love we love it when uh, when people call and talk about the uh, their successes. Um, but you know, again, I, I think the bigger the bigger the bigger point to make here is that any conversation we have on the air with with a listener, with a borrower, with a viewer. Uh, is always going to be a positive conversation because yeah. for every question that they ask, there's probably a hundred people listening that that are afraid to ask it for one reason okay. or another. And yeah, it's it's educational, it's informative. Um, I know it takes some courage to call on the air, and I and I admire that. I I totally totally get it. Uh, but but when you call us on the air with your questions, it encourages other people to take that step forward. And we have put so many families into homes who thought that they that they that they could not become homeowners for, for one reason or another um perhaps you're in a loan right now with a high interest rate and there are still several people out there with very very high interest rates uh, that yeah. never refinanced um you know fha has a great streamlined refinance program um, i also offer a va streamlined refinance program no appraisal no income documentation but you got to give me a call We've got to put the loan together in order to get started. These are not driven by credit score. These are driven by the fact that you already have a government-backed loan, FHA or a VA mortgage. 
So, and I, cause I think it's important, Rob, that you, we actually can see ourselves in it, you know, so um, go a little more in detail about talking about the different loans so that everybody can kind of paint their picture. Like and the more you talk, I say, okay, oh, I can see myself in this category. The veterans, of course, you see where you are, but for the rest of us. <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. So uh, obviously the VA loan we, we've spoken about in, in a great, in a great deal of a uh, great deal of depth. It's a no money down loan. I don't care what your credit score is. If you're a veteran, you will never have a down payment ever, never, never. Doesn't matter if you've got that 410 credit score we were talking about a moment ago or an 810 credit score, you'll never have a down payment. Um, FHA loans, that's that's actually the loan that is more of a, of a common loan. More people choose FHA. An FHA loan re requires a small down payment, typically three and a half percent of the of the amount you spend uh there are down payment assistance and closing cost assistance programs available for customers with a, an fha loan and, and and with a with a va loan as well for that matter um so uh fha can go all the way down to a 500 credit score um, an fha loan an fha loan can go as high as a 57 percent debt to income ratio Depending on depending on the customer and the uh, and the specific situation as far as credit goes, uh, USDA loans. It's another no pay, no down payment mortgage loan, none okay. zero zip. The only issue about a USDA loan is that you're going to be required to live in a very specific geographic area. USDA loans are not valid for anywhere anywhere in the United States. Rather, they are valid for specific geographical territory that is being um, repopulated for some uh, for some reason in some form or fashion. Um, an example would be uh, you won't get a USDA loan if you want to live in downtown Dallas, but if you want to live out in Little Elm, you'll be able to get a oh. USDA loan. So it's more like the rural areas where they're trying to build it's them up. Rural. That's exactly what it is. That's, that's a great way to say it. It's our rural, rural uh, development loans. Exactly. There's also conventional financing. Conventional financing would include your Fannie Mae and your Freddie Mac loans. Conventional financing uh, is basically set aside for individuals who meet a very specific credit model, typically stronger credit. Um, and those loans, those loans will carry mortgage insurance with them, just like an FHA loan uh, or a USDA loan. Um, on a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan, the benefit to those loans is that once you have 20% equity in your property, you will stop paying your monthly mortgage insurance. Absolutely, without a doubt. On a, on a government loan, that mortgage insurance is there for as long as you own the, the home and it's financed through a government mortgage product. So wow. there's, there's a lot of benefit to conventional financing, although most loans don't meet that criteria, quite literally. Most loans are... Uh, um, far and above a government loan, typically an FHA loan, um, and and obviously a VA loan if you're if you're qualified as a veteran to buy a home. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at when it comes to uh, comes to different loan types. Uh, now, something else to talk about: fixed rate mortgages versus adjustable rate mortgages. You know, we've had we've had this we've had this conversation in the past. Um, a fixed rate mortgage means that you're going to have that rate from day one until until the last day of the last year you're paying on that loan. Your interest rate isn't going to move unless you refinance your house. On an adjustable rate mortgage, that rate can fluctuate up and down. Typically, it's going to be based on a uh, an index, and, and there's going to be a margin attached to it. So whatever, the index may be the 10-year, uh, uh, the 10-year, uh, treasury and you may have a, a, a two and a half point margin attached to it which means we take the treasury and then we attach the margin to it and it can fluctuate perhaps every six months perhaps every year perhaps every two or three or five years um, those are very dangerous loans and i don't advocate anybody ever looking at an adjustable rate mortgage loan for yeah. that very reason. um you know it's it's very it's very um uh, very risky to put yourself in a situation where you don't know what your loan is going to be from from year to year. Uh, there's also um, there's also uh, uh, conventional loans that will allow you to do a 
a 10 year fixed period, perhaps, or a five year or seven year fixed period. Okay. Um, perhaps something worth considering depending on how long you intend to own your home. But again, uh, I don't know that any of us really have a time horizon that is that clear when it comes to home ownership. I, I think that uh, our world just changes so quickly right now. We may start off saying we're going to be in a home for 10 years or seven years, but things change and the world spins awful fast sometimes. So um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of a 30 year fix. Okay. Okay. Well, see, Rob, when I pull up to the restaurant, I want the total package. I want the best of the best. I want um, a low, I want a 600 credit score. I want uh, low interest rates. I want no down payment. Is this possible? Uh, I like that analogy. Uh, it's <laughs> possible. Yes, it's it's possible. Um, of, of course, the interest rates that you see today aren't going to be consistent with the interest rates that we saw two years ago wow. when when we were quoting, you know, three three percent rates. Um, that's just not available anymore. And and again, we can we can look backwards and see exactly what brought about those three percent rates. At that point in time, um, there literally was no Fed funds rate, which means there was no there was no uh, there was no cost for these banks to borrow money from the Federal Reserve. And in fact, at one point, we went into a negative territory, where where um, the banks were were not only uh, not only borrowing money for for free. But uh, but in certain in certain areas, they're actually being paid to borrow money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is this is part of the quantitative easing that, that all began back with George Bush carried through uh, Barack Obama and and there, you know, and so on and so forth through these presidencies. Um, we are not we are not involved in quantitative easing any longer. We are not buying our own treasury bills anymore. We are not buying our own mortgage-backed securities, uh, which we were for many, many, many years. And that's what suppressed all those interest rates. Um, nobody else was buying was buying a, a uh, uh, was buying the American the American uh, American uh, securities, the American mortgage-backed securities, because rates were too low. They weren't appealing to mm -hmm. these to these uh, foreign governments. Um, We've stopped doing that, which is what's caused rates to go up. And now we have a very healthy uh, mortgage-backed security market. That's exactly what's going on. And mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, we're not going to see these low interest rates. Not that low ever again, I don't I don't expect. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> very well explained. 972-988-1040. If you have a phone call right now, you want to call and give us a testimony of how Rob has helped you. Or if you just have a question, because like he said, you have that question, but there's so many other people who have the same question. Or maybe you're asking for someone else, or maybe you need to get someone out of your house and give us a call. Yeah, you know, that, that's really funny that you bring that up because, um, in fact, there are there are um, uh, times when I'll get a phone call from uh, from grandma and <laughs> and grandmother calls me on the phone and she says, I've got my granddaughter and her two babies living with me, but they got to go. They got to go. <laughs> and, and so what can I, what can I do to help them? And, and that's okay. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of times when, when family members want to help you move on, you just have to, you, you have to, you have to explore <laughs> the possibilities, explore the options. And I, I can't, I can't uh, stress enough that it is the right time for, uh, yeah, this is right now is the time. And I, I would even ask grandma, uh, is she willing to help? <laughs> in, in a lot of cases, grandma is uh, or, yeah, or, yeah. or grandpa or the uncle yeah, or yeah. or mom and dad. I, or I mom just, and dad. Yeah, I think I think there's there's there's, um, you know, there's there's so much opportunity to be said. And, and it's really interesting. Anybody who owns a home right now is going to be so much more understanding about their uh, their child or their grandchild wanting to own their own home. Yeah, because they, they know it's definitely an, an investment. And it looks like we have a caller, Rob. Oh, great. Great. Go ahead, caller. How are you? Uh-oh. Caller, you there? Okay. Well, maybe they're gone. Maybe they had a question. Maybe uh forgot. Okay, caller, you can definitely call us back at 972-988-1040. Hello. 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 Hello.
Maybe um, that was maybe that was grandma calling. <laughs> grandma decided to call. Yes, let's talk to your grandma or my home and dad. <laughs> those those grandma calling. Um, <laughs> you know, again, there there is there's a hundred different ways to buy a house. The main thing I think all of our listeners, all of our viewers need to get get comfortable with is it's time to stop wasting money paying rent. And yeah, once yeah. and once you have once you have that mindset, once you are comfortable with the fact that um, it might cost you a little bit more money to buy a home, but it's going to be so much more beneficial to you. Uh, that's when it's time to make the move. Um, it is the right time to do this in the marketplace. There's no doubt about it, but you've got to be comfortable with, uh, with, with the fact that you are not willing to waste your money any longer. And that's all rent is rent is nothing more than, than a big waste of money. A big bucket of wasting. Okay, looks like the caller is back. Hello, caller. We can hear you. Yes, my name is Terry, and I want to know the difference between a HELOC loan and a refinance, and what is the pros and cons of that? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for that question. So, um, a HELOC loan is HELOC is an acronym for Home Equity Line of Credit. Are you still are you still on the line with us, Terry? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A HELOC is 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 basically a home equity line of credit. A home equity line of credit is typically a second lien mortgage loan that's put on top of your current interest uh, on top of your current loan. So the benefit to that is it will not impact your existing mortgage loan. The negative to that is that it's a second lien that's being placed on top of that loan. And more often than not, it's a variable rate mortgage, meaning it's not a fixed rate. Uh, it's not a fixed rate repayment. A HELOC is basically a way for an individual to take equity out of their home. They're going to be bound to the Texas home equity laws, which mean that you cannot borrow more than 80% of the full appraised value. Uh, but a HELOC is certainly something to consider for an individual that does not want to refinance their first lien. Um, however, like I said, there is there is a flip side to that, and HELOCs can be very uh, can be very very risky, very cumbersome. Um, a home equity loan is totally different than a HELOC. A home equity loan is basically refinancing your first mortgage. You get a whole brand new loan, one hundred percent new. It totally reamortizes from day one, um, and a home equity loan will be based on on the same parameters: eighty percent max loan to value, again based on credit. Um, but it will be a fixed rate mortgage loan with a consistent amortization schedule throughout the loan. Um, I don't do HELOC mortgage loans for that very reason. Uh, I can refer them out. I've got places to send people to, but I don't touch HELOCs just because. Uh, of the, of the risk involved and the fact that that most people, when they find out what a HELOC truly is, they become uncomfortable with the process. <laughs> um, if you have questions, though, give me a call. I'm going to give you my telephone number, and we can certainly talk about your situation and specific off the air. My telephone number is going to be nine seven two seven three nine two three five zero. That's nine seven two seven three nine twenty three fifty. Uh, you can also find me on the internet anytime at the lenders texas excuse me at lenderstexas.com you can find me on facebook as the as the lenders residential mortgage team i apologize uh, but you, but, re yeah, but reach thank out you. yes sir i'd love to help you and happy new years thank you happy new year to you as well thank you absolutely God all bless. right Rob. goodness good stuff we're out of time now so we got to catch you back here next friday rob thank you next friday absolutely thank you so much autumn god bless you and happy new year's once again thank you you too take care okay bye-bye KGGR invites you to tune in at one